on our screen. <laughs> well, it says week 11 there, but hey, it's week 10. You know I move them around a bit. Uh, right, so we're looking today at ethics. <laughs> ethics in information in corporate governance. It actually has quite an interesting impact on the assignment you've got this, term, this semester. Um, but one of the problems we have with ethics is are we doing the right sort of thing at the right sort of place or in the right sort of place at the right time with lots of you know, the things that we looked at right early on? Are we doing it for the right reasons? And there are some very, very interesting examples over the last few years where both corporate and information governance ethics have been um, forgotten, shall we say. Has anybody done anything about or any read it, further reading on business continuity uh, and how it affects the way we design our IT services, the way that we uh, consider the way, uh, corporate government policies and strategies? Because that may be a very, very important. Where you've got data with uncertain veracity, it may become quite important particularly in the era of big data, that we do consider business continuity in a whole range of areas. And it's really important that you followed on from last week's uh, seminar and workshop, thinking more deeply, researching more deeply about all of the, the whole breadth of what business continuity really means. So we'll have a little look at that after we've done the main sort of presentations. What I want you to do when we finish this is to do the usual sort of research, three or more sources to find definitions of business ethics and information ethics. So I want you to find uh, definitions for these three things because you will find many, many definitions of what ethics is. Ethics in the abstract philosophical sense, but then in the more applied sense of ethics for business ethics for information governance, information, um, how we use it more effectively and, pro and properly. Now the point about definitions is that they help us in terms of A, understanding what the topic is all about. It then helps us to uh, begin to think about critically evaluating the various definitions in specific contexts. That's what critical thinking is all about. Comparing, contrasting different ideas, and then putting them into a context. And here we're looking at the, at the module, the breadth of corporate governance, the breadth of information governance. And then for your assignment, you then narrow that right down into the context of, we're talking about using big data. We're using data which has uncertain veracity, we don't know which data is correct or which data is not correct, or by how much it's incorrect. So that has a fairly big impact on what we can use the analyses for. As an example, let's go back. Have we talked about the target situation so far? Do you remember what target did? About three or four years ago, target, which is a very big supermarket chain in the USA, I think number two probably compared with Walmart. They started, in actual fact quite a long time before that, they started doing some market research analysis to see if they could identify um, from within their total customer base those women who were pregnant. Because the marketeers knew that if they can target pregnant women, they can help change their preferences, probably for life. And so what they want to set a challenge to their big data analytics team, say, look guys, can you actually identify women who are pregnant? And they eventually discovered, yes, from looking at the changing buying patterns, you know, the thing that we call nest building, they're getting the stuff for their little baby that's going to arrive. Um, they also have changing tastes, as any of you who have, uh, have had um, partners or seen relatives who are pregnant, you know that the women kind of change their tastes. They sometimes go off coffee or go off chocolate or, 
or whatever. And by looking at this, they were able to identify the women who were pregnant and roughly which trimester they were in. Were they in the first three months, the second three months, or the final six or three months? And they found they could also um, predict, so within quite an accurate um, point, within about a month, when they were going to have their baby. Okay, no problem. Lots and lots of data, and probably not that difficulty in terms of veracity, unless they were ch sharing credit cards or loyalty cards or something. But by and large, they were relatively certain of what they could do. What then happened was the marketing team said, oh, this is fantastic. Now we can start sending out little booklets of vouchers, discount vouchers, to all, all of our, uh, the, those women we've identified. Now, they didn't just send out vouchers for baby things and so on. They sent out vouchers for the whole product range that Target did because a lot of people only thought of them as um, food or something else. And they would go to other shops for other products. But they wanted to get them to think, here is Target. It covers everything from garden furniture to baby food, baby nappies, um, cosmetics and so on. And they thought this was a fantastically clever thing that they had done. Until one day, a very, very angry father came into a store and demanded to see the manager. And was waving this little booklet of vouchers and saying to the manager, do you really want to get my daughter, my 16-year-old daughter pregnant? So the manager said, oh dear, I'm sorry, I didn't know anything about this. I, I, I'm really sorry, I'll, I'll try and find out and I'll phone you back. About a week later, he phoned back and said, I, I'm sorry, I really can't help you with this. I don't know what's going on. I, no one will tell me anything's happening. And the father said, ah, I'm the one who has to apologize. There were things going on in a family that I wasn't privy to. The 16-year-old girl was pregnant, and she just hadn't got round to telling her parents that she was pregnant. This news, this got into the newspapers back in 2012, and you can still find the articles uh, of Wall Street Journal, New York Times, and so on. And in fact, one or two of the journalists had actually been ra shown round and told this story. And then the sky falls in. Now, the qu ethical question here it ultimately is one, well, there are several ethical questions. One, should target actually have been data mining to identify their pregnant customers? Two, should the marketing team then have sent out these emails and the uh, booklets of vouchers to their customers? Because it turns out that they were able to identify um, pregnancy in their customers from their changing patterns often before the woman had actually got round to telling her husband or partner or parents. So they were getting very, very early notification. So there are two ethical questions. Should they have done that analysis? And two, having done that analysis, should they have used those results in that way? And if you look at the definitions that you'll be finding, you may be able to work out an answer to one or other or both of those questions. So that's really what is so important about looking at the definitions. And I mean, it's a perennial point I keep making about critical analysis and critical thinking and research. If you don't understand a term, go search for a whole range of definitions, not just the Oxford uh, Dictionary definition or the, the Wikipedia definition. Go find lots of different definitions. Look at the context of each of those definitions. Find definitions in varying contexts. And then, once you've got the idea in your mind about ethics, what is ethics? How does it apply to corporate ethics? How does it apply to information governance ethics? Then go find some articles. Find lots of articles. If you want to go back to the early part of the 20s, you know, have a look at Enron and companies like that. 
have a look at what's been going on with the British Home Store, the BHS, over the last few years under uh, Green, and then when he sold it for a pound to the next guy, and we now find that the pension fund is short by about half a billion sterling. Because a huge amount of uh, revenue, uh, cash, was taken out of the company as dividend to the private shareholder, rather than being put into the uh, pension fund. And if you think about the British, the UK Companies Act 2006, section 172, that we've talked about, where the second, there are two fundamental, at the top of the list, corporate responsibilities of directors. The first one is to ensure the sustainability of a company. And the second one is to consider the interests of their employees. Clearly, in BHS, we can see that the sustainability of the company was not considered properly. It went bust, end of last year, early this year. Enron, the company blew up completely. We see many, many organisations where similar things are happening. What is it that's going wrong with the business ethics of the directors when they get, let their companies get into those positions by extracting huge amounts of money? And you can see it also in terms of a lot of the work that goes on with the hedge funds and the uh, other private equity funds who buy a company with load huge amounts of debt onto the balance sheet of the companies and then extract most of the money they've just raised in the, uh, to do the purchase as their own dividend. And then take a company that was nearly pretty much debt free and very, very sustainable, buy it up, load it with debt, take out the money for them and leave it with a huge debt on their balance sheet which needs servicing. And so, is that ethical? It may be legal, but is it ethical? So these are sort of questions I want you to find through the, looking for lots of articles. Have a look for the articles on pregnancy forecasting with Target. Understand what went on there. Um, so, here's the research. And then, through this session, do the critical analysis. How important is ethics in terms of running businesses successfully? Go back to the first week when you were looking for um, problems. Think back to last year with Google, Amazon, Starbucks. You know, the question of how much tax should we pay? Should we be moving money offshore to Belgium or to Ireland or somewhere or the Bahamas? Or should we be paying a bigger proportion of our taxes in each country? And that's about the fourth or the fifth of the responsibilities of directors. Not specifically as you must pay your taxes, but to consider the community, the local community and the extended community within which you operate. So there's quite a lot of interesting side, sideways looks at, uh, that you can take up in terms of ex exploring that. Then think about a topic called corporate social responsibility. Now you looked at the DGSI um, metrics from uh, earlier on this semester, in week two, I think it was, maybe three. Think back to that and the sort of questions they were raising as part of the questionnaire. How does that relate to ethics? How does it relate to the value and the importance of corporate social responsibility? Now, you'll need to find some articles, academic articles now, about does having a good uh, corporate social responsibility profile, does this actually help you to become a sustainable organisation? And if you think back to that, some of the questions are things like, have you got policies for green um, sustainability type of things? Uh, have you got policies and procedures for um, uh, women, 
on the board, at high levels of the organisation, and a whole range of other types of factors. Now, one of the observations I will make at this point to help you is that the DGSI SAM metrics and the other ones like the FTSE sustainability matrix uh, survey that goes out to companies who want to be included on the DGSI um, set or the FTSE sustainability, uh, sustainable um, companies, they only ask for do you have the policies in place? The critical gap in all of these assessments is demonstrate your compliance with all of your policies and processes. Because if we look at some of the big oil companies, they fit nicely, because of all their, the existence of all their policies and so on, into the DTSI. However, we know from a lot of court cases and other enforcement activities around the world that many of them Yes, they've got all the right ticks in the box to be a sustainable, a corporately social responsibility sort of company. But in practice, they don't do it. If you think about when that um, Macondo oil well blew up a few, a few years ago, that com the company who owned that had a beautiful CSR profile on DGSI. And yet, the actual practices that happened on the ground were, it's too expensive to do that, we'll have to cut corners. And to save about $50 million, which caused that horrendous catastrophe, it then cost the company that was involved something like $60 billion. So save $50 million or so, cost 60 billion. They had the policies and the procedures but didn't enforce them, they didn't monitor the compliance. So maybe one of the problems here is lots of companies have the policies and procedures but there is no enforcement from the top or anywhere else. Think about, we could think about VW and a lot of other automotive companies who have found ways of getting past or around the regulations on um, emissions. There's a thought at the, on the, in the paper this morning or last yesterday that VW could have a bill for two and a half million pounds uh, from London because a whole lot of cars which have been going in and out of London um, for free, low emissions, actually when you really look at them, have much lower or much are much less effective, and should have been paying their um, congestion charging fees. And they're having to lose thirty thousand employees, to lose a lot of cost out of the company because they need to take account of the fact they're going to get fined enormous um, amounts, or they're going to have to pay huge amounts of compensation. So thirty thousand employees are going to lose their jobs because. They didn't enforce those policies on being open, honest, transparent, and not cheating. So these are kind of things that want, I want you to fight, think about as you look at that area. A final aspect, and this is very much an academic piece of research, and if you just put it look in uh, the academic journal areas, about corporate social responsibility, and you'll want to look for papers within the last three or four years, because there's been quite a lot of research about whether having a CSR program actually makes any difference whatsoever to the long-term long success of an organization. So, a whole range of activities delving into ethics at a corporate level, at an information governance level, and this corporate social responsibility, which has a lot of words about it. Is there any action? Is there any impact of it? So that's that part, folks. So then, a little bit later on, just to give you a warning of what's going to happen um, on Thursday, 
just so you know where what you're working towards. So this today this morning is all about the research to build up your knowledge base and do some critical thinking about it, and then put it into context, the context of your data governance strategy that you're developing for companies using big data, which is often very, very uncertain veracity. So what do we do? How do we make sure that we don't put our company into jeopardy, whether it could be legal or reputational or financial? There's lots of things that can go wrong if we get it wrong. I mean, take, for example, Target, they had a bit a double whammy because they had this sky falling in over the pregnancy side, prediction side, and then a few months later, six, eight months later, they then had a problem with their information governance where they didn't protect their uh, customers' personal information effectively. And 70 million sets of ID were stolen <coughs> over a period of about 10, 12 days. Again, you can find a lot of information about that particular incident. Um, Again, researching in the press and the technical press. You can also go back last year to Talk Talk when they, again, because of lack of information security, uh, their overall approaches didn't necessarily protect the data effectively enough. They lost, an, again, a largest number of sets of ID, but more importantly, they lost a large number of customers who will not go back to them now. Lost revenue, they lost customers, and that had big effects. A huge reputational damage. And we can see that time and time again when you go back to Sony with their, that huge uh, PlayStation problem and also the emails problem. Think of all of these things. Why didn't they protect the data more effectively. Because we know from work by Bruce Schneier that by and large most hacks, most successful hacks, hacks are because the software in various places wasn't necessarily fully up to date, uh, the policing mechanisms of, of the periphery weren't effective enough, human error to some extent, but then if you know there's going to be human error, then you have other processes in place to double check. So it all comes back in my mind to having effective information governance processes and ethics is part of that. So the task is very much from what you learn today on Thursday, then you build that into your assignment as appropriate in the context. And we can have this discussion in a fortnight because of course next week the, what's going to happen is you're going to have your review with me in my office uh, of your final draft which you'll submit on Sunday night by midnight so that we can have start ha having a review against the schedule which I'll publish this week of when you need to come into my office for your 10 minute review of where you've got to. Okay, now what I will expect next week is that you will have got a draft properly structured so you will have uh, all of the major sections there, you will have all of the subsections and ideally you should have all of the work written in there in the appropriate format in the LNCS document template. Um, and to the right length and properly, format, and properly formatted uh, bibliography. So it should look as though you've just finished it, ready to go. And then I'll give you the feedback and that will help you do better. For those of you who have not been through this process last year with ITSM or whenever you did that, it will help you get an extra 5 to 20% on your uh, grade. So it's worth doing as good a job as possible by, by Sunday night, because then it will still get a lot of good feedback, which will help you do better still. Okay, folks.
Do we just send it to you by email? Nope. Yes. You submit it on Turnitin or through Turnitin to the final draft uh, submission point, which you'll find in assessments. Okay.